Buy now, pay later. What could possibly go wrong? Hi there, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. You know how you can stuff a little spinach in a fruit smoothie? You trick yourself into getting the nutrients without having to taste the spinach. That's what it's like here. You get so distracted by the topics that you don't realize you're actually learning new words the whole time. That is how it works here. Anyway, today's lesson is number 472, and that means JR, the producer, has uploaded the full content to plainenglish.com slash 472. Today's topic is about the dangers of buy now, pay later. You first heard about that in last Thursday's lesson, number 471. So if you haven't listened to that one yet, go ahead and listen at plainenglish.com slash 471. One. In the second half of today's lesson, you'll learn how to use the phrase egg on, and spoiler alert, it doesn't have anything to do with eggs. Last Thursday, I introduced you to America's new favorite way to pay for online goods. It's called Buy Now, Pay Later. Here in the U.S., it's hard to avoid seeing this option at the checkout page of our favorite online stores. This option lets us pay for our purchases in installments. Instead of paying the full cost up front, we can pay in, say, four monthly or bi-weekly payments. Buy now, pay later is not exactly a new concept. It's the same idea as a credit card, a mortgage loan, a student loan, or a car loan. It lets you receive something of value today and pay for it over time out of your future earnings. Just like taking on any other type of debt, this can make sense if you want a large purchase today and you are reasonably certain you'll have the ability to make the payments later. As you learned last week, consumers like these payment terms because they're more accessible and they have a beginning and an end, and crucially, they don't require interest payments. These payment plans started to become popular about two years ago. They were popular with Peloton exercise bikes. Consumers weren't paying for gym memberships, so they could afford to pay for an expensive exercise bike over a few months. It was popular to use Buy Now, Pay Later with bulky furniture, too. And then, as travel opened up, you started to see buy now, pay later with flights. But now, people are using buy now, pay later to buy household goods like cleaning supplies or even groceries. Browser extensions and apps let you buy now and pay later even at online shops that don't offer the option at checkout. Buy now, pay later can be a good deal if you make the payments on time. 
But if you don't make the payments on time, it's another story. Miss a payment, and all of a sudden you owe interest on the loan, and you might have to pay additional fees. And many are reporting missed payments to credit reporting bureaus. Those missed payments will affect a consumer's ability to get a mortgage loan down the line. The buy now, pay later companies market themselves as a friendly, modern alternative to credit cards. But consumers that miss a payment will find that their loans are forwarded to collection agencies. These agencies are not friendly and modern. They are old-fashioned debt collectors. It won't surprise you that the youngest generation of consumers is the one in the most trouble, egged on by influencers who make a commission off their followers' purchases. TikTok users might recognize a popular type of video, an influencer opening up box after box of clothing, jewelry, and accessories, screaming in delight at every new item. Some promote entire wardrobe revamps, encouraging followers to literally replace all of their clothes. The influencers often get those clothes for free, but their viewers imitate them buying now and paying later for clothing, makeup, jewelry, and perfume. One survey found that 73% of Generation Z's buy now, pay later spending is on fashion. The influencers get commissions or direct payments from brands. The followers get a brand new type of debt. One survey found that 70% of customers spent more than they would have spent if they had to pay the full price up front. And 42% of consumers have missed a payment. Another survey found that 30% of Generation Z shoppers have missed two payments. But you might be asking, is this worse? than regular credit card debt? I don't think it's worse, but it has a different set of dangers. The first is the marketing. Buy now, pay later is heavily marketed toward people who don't qualify for credit cards. This can be good by extending credit to people who need it for big purchases. But these are also the people who can least afford it or who are least able to manage it. Another concern is that consumers believe these loans make their purchases cheaper. This is hard for me to believe, but A lot of shoppers freely admit that they feel their purchases are cheaper when they pay in installments. They also don't think that these loans are debt. In fact, a spokesman for Afterpay said these installment payments were a way for consumers to pay over time his exact words, without having to go into debt. Of course, buy now, pay later is the definition of going into debt. 
The final concern is that this form of loan has not yet survived a recession. You can complain all you like about banks and their rules, but they spend a lot of time studying how their loans would be affected by a recession based on what happened in previous recessions. Well, buy now, pay later firms have no track record to study. And the move fast and break things ethos of Silicon Valley startups doesn't give me much comfort that they're being responsible when they do extend credit. I will never forget the first time I heard the word influencer. I was walking down the street with a friend, and he pointed out another person sitting at a table at an outdoor cafe. And my friend said, that's a really popular influencer. And I did a double take. Influencer was not a popular word before social media. It took me a second to realize what it even meant. And I thought, if you follow him and if you read what he writes and you openly call him an influencer, then what does that make you? That makes you the influenced. And to this day, I continue to marvel at the term, how freely people use the word influencer, and it's like they're openly admitting that they're being manipulated. The word just makes me laugh. I can't help it. Today's expression is egg on. And this is a funny expression. Don't ask me why it means what it does. Like I said before, it has nothing to do with eggs. To egg someone on is to encourage someone to do something that's either wrong, foolish, or not in their best interest. Think back to when you were a kid. Think about the kids at your school. There were always the kids who were willing to break the rules. And then there were the kids who egged them on. Those were the ones, and you know who I'm talking about. Maybe it was you. They didn't break the rules themselves. No, 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 never. But they encouraged others to break the rules. They egged other kids on. They said things like, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if someone threw a french fry across the cafeteria? And then, sure enough, someone else would go and do it. Well, the first kid who makes the suggestion is egging the other kids on. He's encouraging the bad behavior. Now, kids don't know it at the time, but teachers are wise to this. The teachers understand there are innocent-looking kids who never break the rules, but are nonetheless egging other kids on. So teachers will sometimes intervene, and they'll look at the smiling, innocent-looking kids, and they'll say, don't egg him on. That means don't encourage him to misbehave. I say him. Of course, girls can egg one another on, too. It's just that 
the girls are a little less obvious about their rule breaking. At least that's the way I remember it. Now, fast forward 15 years, the kids on the playground are now online shoppers. And they get to the checkout page and they see a big number. Gosh, I didn't realize all these clothes cost so much, they might think. And then they might remember their friendly influencer buddies on TikTok had a great suggestion. Just buy now, pay later. It makes the whole thing cheaper. Well, the influencers make money when their followers buy stuff. So the influencers want you to spend, spend, spend. And so they egg their followers on by saying, hey, if you can't afford this, just buy now, pay later. They encourage the bad behavior. Now, there is no economic rationale to borrow money to buy makeup or clothing. That is a bad habit. But the influencers don't care. It's not like they have to pay the bills. It's not like it's their credit that will get ruined. So they egg people on and say, your wardrobe is out of date. You need to replace every single piece of clothing you own. And if it seems expensive, well, just buy now, pay later. They encourage bad behavior. They're egging people on. Now, remember I said egg on is to encourage someone to do something wrong, like throwing food in a cafeteria, or foolish, like going into debt to buy clothes, or not in their best interest. We talked a few weeks ago about Elon Musk's drive to acquire Twitter. And there was a story in the media that said an inner circle of advisors around Elon Musk was egging him on to acquire Twitter because they, these advisors, had grievances against Twitter. So Elon Musk may yet reinvent Twitter and make a massive amount of money off it. It may wind up being great for him and great for society. Who knows? Or Musk might get distracted by Twitter and as a result neglect his other businesses, which are much more valuable. If that happens, it will have been a foolish pursuit. But, and this is according to media stories, there were some people egging Elon Musk on to buy Twitter. They wanted him to buy Twitter for their own selfish reasons. So they encouraged him to pursue buying the company. Not because it was good for Elon Musk, not because it was good for the world, but because they had their own selfish reasons. Again, according to media reports. It's Monday, so I've got a quote of the week for you. Here's one from Pablo Picasso. He said, Without great solitude, no serious work is possible. Obviously, he was an artist, so he worked alone. But it's worth remembering in our days of back-to-back -back Zoom calls that unscheduled time to think and concentrate is necessary to do your best work. So if your day starts filling up 
you have my permission to start declining calendar invites. And in your reply, just paste this quote from Pablo Picasso. Just say, and this can be to anyone in the company, just say, without great solitude, no serious work is possible. So I'm afraid I can't attend this call. Better yet, you can set an email vacation responder for a whole week and reply to everyone. Without great solitude, no serious work is possible. So I'll reply to your email next week. So did you see what I just did? I was egging you on. It's probably not a good idea to paste that quote in an autoresponder, not in your best interest. But unlike the influencers of the world, I'll at least come clean and I'll admit when I'm egging you on. Well, one thing that is definitely in your best interest is to follow along with all of our lessons. And the best way to do that is as a member of plainenglish.com. And there is even a free membership, which opens up a lot of extra lesson resources, like the transcript, the additional English expression that's exclusively on the website, and it's called Learn the Lingo. And below every lesson transcript, are two links to English articles that I used to prepare the lesson. So you can always dig deeper and learn more about any topic. Now that's the free membership. You don't even have to pay later to get that free content. So to join, just go to plainenglish.com, follow the instructions, pick your plan and get to work because it is in your best interest to do a little bit every day in English. And plainenglish.com is where you can do that. Our next lesson will be on Thursday. That's when I'll give you an update on a few recent lesson topics. See you then. <laughs>